I don't think y'all understand how excited I get when Mr. Nightmare uploads a video. For example, a woman can literally be clucking me, giving me head, giving me brains, giving me yeah. She can literally be riding me, you know, good as a mother clucking, back top slop on a donkey ass, right? But the second I get that notification, that missing number uploaded, right? I'm like, bitch, get off me. And I do not mean to use that term in a, in a rude, negative way. It just it's, it came out. I don't go around. I'm out, I'm not out here calling we ma we males, we males. I'm not out here calling females bitches, cause they not. You not. And if you consider yourself a bitch, you not. You awesome, you're beautiful, you're sexy, you're fine, you're smart. You know what I'm saying? You ready? You got your snack, got your cutter buddy, got your datas. All right, then, let's get it. Sup? No. Oh, so these are random. Here we go. Oh, yes. I was home alone one night during winter break. Why? I was watching TV in our sunroom, which is like a smaller living room type space, which we use as a TV and movie room. Okay. There was also a door to the side driveway in this room. What? I had all the blinds shut and was under a blanket watching some random movie I don't even remember. Okay. And out of nowhere, the lights turn on outside. We have a motion sensing light out there. So the fact that it turned on was concerning. I had to lower the volume. Oh, okay, okay. We we start we started off bucks today. Okay, mm, okay, okay, cool. Mm -mm, okay, this is popcorn bobby You want some? You you can go and get psyched. I'm just playing. Don't touch my popcorn. Oh, okay. So we starting off. We we starting like this. Okay. All right, cool, cool. You better make sure. I don't need to say it. I'm on the TV to listen up for any possible sounds. It was unlikely I'd hear anything from outside, though. So I lifted the blinds briefly just to do a quick check. No, no, no. It was clear. There was no way that I know of to shut off that light. So as annoying as it was, I just had to wait. I figured it was a raccoon or a possum or something that might have triggered the light. Oh, I'm um, human. Though the more I thought about it, the less that made sense. So I put on my shoes and just walked around the driveway to ease my mind. You have got to be shitting me. Obviously, he didn't put on no Adidas. You know, he must have either put on some Vans, some Jordans, some Nikes, some Reebok. Anything, literally anything other, other than Adidas. Because Adidas would have never, never gone for that shit. Not gone with no bullshit like that. Your motion sensor, your motion sensor light came on right right outside the house, and you're talking about, hey, maybe I should go check it out, bitch. No, that's not how that works. Okay, it may it may work with a person that owns a pair of Vans and wears a pair pair of Vans, but it don't, don't work with nobody that owns and wears Adidas. Like no, okay, no. So okay, you you ah, uh, you oh, No one was there, so I could go back to watching TV with a clear head. No, you, no, you can. Some time passed, and I suddenly heard a bucket full of something fall over outside, and then the motion sensing light turned back on. Damn it! The first time it happened, I was concerned, but now I was straight up scared. Someone or something was out there. I was hoping it was an animal. I really started to doubt it. I didn't want to get up because the couch was actually the only blind spot from the door to the side. Oh, shit. I had a fear of getting up and seeing somebody standing at that door. Oh, my God. I wanted to shut the TV now, but the remote was in the middle of the coffee table, and I was afraid to even move that much. Don't move at all. I looked to the blinds, which were fully pulled shut. Mm. However, I wasn't looking at the blinds. I was looking at what I saw through the blinds. Oh, my God. Oh, it was a perfect outline of a person standing on the other side. You got with their it. Their arms stretched out a bit from their body. You got it. I don't know how to describe in writing how I felt in that moment. There was an intense feeling in my heart and stomach area, and I felt like it was harder to breathe. 
That's how scared I was. Mm -hmm. I got up from the couch as quietly as I could, but before I could even get to the door that separates the sunroom and the dining room, the person on the other end started knocking aggressively on the window. I wanted to scare them away somehow. I was too scared to go out there. Shut the hell up. Don't you say shit in your house. Don't say nothing. Don't eat, barely breathe, mother clocking. Don't do nothing. Don't do, don't say nothing. Don't, don't, yeah. Just stay there in that same exact spot. Don't, no. Don't do nothing. And maybe I missed it, but I don't know if anybody else is in your house, okay? Or in that house that you're in, okay? But if they are, So I screamed in a shaky voice, I'm calling the cops. I stood by the doorway for a second to see if they stopped, and they did. Mm -hmm. And I saw the shadow beyond the blinds move towards the door, and I saw some old, crazy-looking woman with wiry hair on the other side of the door. For a moment, I felt less intimidated, until she started banging on the glass of my door with both hands, screaming as if she were mental. I slammed the door to the sunroom and called 911 reported some crazy mental old woman attempting to break into my house. Yep. Mm -hmm. I was told to wait in a safe locked room with a weapon to defend myself until the police arrived. Any nightmare I ever had about a break-in came true when I heard glass shattering outside of the bathroom. Your clock. I waited a minute after not hearing anything to slowly and quietly unlock and open the bathroom door. I peered into my living room, and there she was. The old woman with the wiry hair standing in the middle of my living room in front of a broken window. She spotted me when I had the door open and came rushing over to the door. I screamed like the scared 17-year-old I was and slammed the door shut again. The old woman started knocking on the door and wouldn't stop. She was saying things under her breath on the other side and I couldn't make out any of it. I was too busy crying and begging her to go away. I finally heard a bang at the front door. So I opened the bathroom window and screamed help. Two cops came up to the window I was screaming through, and I begged them to crawl through the broken window out back. They assured me they'd be okay and they'll be right here. You sure? The knocking at the door stopped, and a sudden commotion was taking place outside. I heard the two cops scream at the woman to step away from the door. When I stepped out from the bathroom, the two cops had the insane woman detained. I'd imagine they did it pretty easily. Oh my god! She at me with a look of crazy in her eyes. And I looked away. We got it. It turned out the old woman lived in a nearby house with some woman who never leaves the house. None of the neighbors ever really see her. The old woman was messed up in multiple ways and belonged in some... Wait a minute. So you have a crazy mother clogger that was just at the house. But she lives in a house with another mother, crazy mother clogger that never leaves the house? So you, so you live nearby two crazy ladies. I mean, special care police. My parents pressed charges on the younger woman because they felt as her supposed caretaker, she should have been held liable for allowing a mentally disabled person to break into someone else's house. Sadly, my parents lost the lawsuit, but the old crazy woman was out of our neighborhood at the very least. Was she? Was put in some kind of treatment center. Hell nah. We're not about to just glance over the fact. We're not about to just skip to the next. We're not going to the next door. Let's talk about something. Let's talk about the crazy mother clogger that, that stays in the other house that the woman that was just at your house with. What about the one that you... I know y'all all heard it. You know? The crazy lady that was at his house that stayed with somebody else and that person never leaves the house. Hey, what's up? What's up? Officers, your job is not done here. Cause we think your job is done here, bitch. I'm about to be done. So how about you go ahead and investigate create the, the one that never leaves the house? The one that you just arrested. How about you know? Yeah. How about you go check? Yeah, you got me clucked up. No. It's too crazy.
You just got one of them. What about the other one? Mm -mm. Nope. He got it. I own a small house on a big property in the rural part of New York. Okay, hey. I go up there a bunch of times a year in the winter months to go skiing. There's a neighbor up there that i never spoken to once. There's a fence that separates our two yards. Okay. Then on the other sides of my house is woods for miles. Right. There's another neighbor further down the road across the street, and I'd met him in Hey, he literally said woods. Woods for miles. Unless the woods go as far as six miles deep, you're clucked. But if they're shorter than six miles deep, I mean, you're, you're still kind of clucked, but you wouldn't be as clucked if the woods reached out and had an expand of six miles. Just saying. Times because he happens to go skiing too. So we got to know each other based off that. Mm. I went up this past January for the first time in the season. As I walked up to the front door, I heard a kid laughing nearby in the neighbor's house's direction. I figured they had kids, which was news to me. Stepping into the house for the first time each season was always weird. A house that would be empty for a majority of the year. So I'd have to turn on the water and heat and everything, of course. The first night, I slept like a baby after the four-hour drive from Connecticut. Mm. The next morning, after eating breakfast and changing into my ski gear, I went outside and found a big red ball sitting in the snow on my front lawn. Red ball. Sucks, Sucks as, as hell. hell. It wasn't there the day before. Red it flag. It belonged to the neighbors. I took the ball and threw it over the fence separating our properties. See, you touched it now. And I went off to the ski lodge to meet my friends. You are so... spent the day skiing. You are so clucked. When I got back, it was dark out. I had eaten dinner with my friends, so I was ready to go to bed. It's still there. Walking to the front door, I noticed that once again, that big red ball was sitting on my front lawn. Just leave it. Don't don't touch it. The hell it was getting a bit odd, but once again, I threw that red ball over the fence. I woke up in the middle of that night to laughing outside. A kid's laughter. It was like 2 or 3 a.m. A kid playing outside. Popcorn? Damn. Y'all heard that, right? I'm not gonna... I'm not, I'm not going to play it back, but I am going to say what he just said. He heard about two or three kids outside. In between the times of 2 and 3 a.m. Some of y'all know, most of y'all know, if you don't know, 2 a.m. But between the hours of 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. Prime, is prime time for paranormal Paranormal time. So because of that, I'm I'm starting to think that it's not actual real kids. I'm thinking it's like probably not even kids. It's like probably like it's not. I feel like it's not kids. But if it's if it's kids, they're not regular kids. So who the hell? Who the hell? What kid just goes out or kids goes out? In between the hours of 2 a.m. and 3 that's that's very specific time, but mind you, 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. just to just to be out and, and have fun, like nah, mm -mm, that's a red flag, a couple of red flags. Excuse me. For the people that I mean, I'm gonna say it again. For the people that don't know, between the eyes, <laughs> between the hours of 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. is prime time for paranormal time. That's the time we should be in your house 
I'm trying to think what another word that rhymes with house. Mouse, bouse, jouse, blouse, mouse, jouse, louse. I don't know. <laughs> Made no sense. It doesn't. I went to look out my window. I couldn't see any kids though. See? And now the laughter had stopped. See? However, I did see something sitting on my front lawn. No, you didn't. I couldn't tell from the window. So I went outside into the snow in my slippers and robe. And so I know. I know. But do they know? I don't know. But, but, but we know. So, that all, that's pretty much all, all that matters. You know? I suppose you're right. But, um, I'm not. I'm just sick and tired of these, of these poor, poor motherfuckers just investigating shit when they know deep down inside that they shouldn't be. It breaks my heart. It, my heart shrinks up when I know and they know that they shouldn't be investigating shit. Breaks my heart. I mean, so you know, with with all that being said, um, really hope you get clocked up. Red ball once again sitting in the snow. I got chills as I saw it in the same spot once again. See? I took the ball, and this time, instead of throwing it over the fence, I brought it inside my house. I went back to sleep, not hearing any laughter outside again that night. The next morning, before going skiing again, I walked over to the neighbor's house, knocked on the door, and finally introduced myself. Surprisingly, he was an elderly man who seemed completely innocent. Of course. I questioned the child's laughter I kept hearing, and the ball that kept ending up on my lawn. He told me there were no kids around there. You got it. I got chills again. I thanked him, shook his hand, and went back to my house. I left the red ball in my living room and drove back up the mountain and had another day of skiing with my friend. When I got back to the house that night, I was completely exhausted and ready to go home the next day. I threw all my stuff on the couch and figured I'd pack it all up tomorrow. I literally crashed into the bed as my whole body was sore. I fell asleep like a baby. Yeah, pack it up tonight. Except I woke up to a kid's laughter outside again. You have got to be, come on. I jumped out of bed and ran to the window to look outside. There was the red ball, sitting in the snow again. You got me clocked up. Mm -mm. First night, I'm gone. First time that's, that happens to me, with the red ball. I'm out of here. So mother clocking fast, you wouldn't even know I was gone until after the fact. And what did I say? Between the hours of 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. is prime time for paranormal time. And I, I knew it wasn't kids, like, like real human physical kids. And then the old man, the neighbor, he just confirmed that. Talking about, I don't know what, I don't know what kids you talking about. Nah, I ain't hear nothing. See, see, and I know you not hearing shit. So go ahead and get the hell out of there ASAP. And when I say ASAP, I literally mean in the next couple of seconds. Not in minutes, not no hours. I ran to the living room and tore the room upside down looking for the ball. I still know to this day I left it in there when I left, but it wasn't there now. 
I suddenly didn't feel alone in the house. Oh. I turned on every light as I packed up all my wet gear into my bag. I threw everything in the bag so I'd be ready to go if shit hit the fan. I made sure all the doors and windows were locked, and they were, so it made no sense. I left the lights on and went back to my room, shutting off only those lights. Come on, yo. I looked out the window, and far behind the red ball, out in the snow, was what looked like a kid. A kid just standing stiff, looking towards my window. I ducked down and closed the blinds. I closed the blinds to every window in my house. I tried my best to just go to sleep and ignore it. It was a long out. That's like, that's like, that's like, what the hell? Are you, you trying to go to sleep after experiencing something like this? It's equivalent to me trying to like trying to like trying to like clock a girl that I know for a fact and she knows for a fact that she got like like herpes. You know, it's like, I want to go inside, but it's like, like, ew. Like, I want to, but I have to fall back. But I want to, but I have to fall back. So it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I don't know. And pause on this movement. It's like, I want to go inside, but if I do... I know I'm going to catch something, even if I'm wrapped up. <sighs> Love and hate popcorn. Before my exhaustion overcame my fear and I fell asleep. I woke up the next morning, skipped breakfast, packed up the car, and sped the hell away from there, not looking back to the red ball. You should have still on my front lawn. You should have did it last night. I've never had anything to be stolen in that house, so I was okay with leaving it in this situation. Either way, I can't figure out how whoever was out there got into my house to take the ball out in the first place. And that child's laughter still haunts me. But the scariest part of the whole experience was seeing that child standing outside in the cold snow in the middle of the night. Had that ball not been taken out of my living room somehow, this whole thing would be different. But because of that, I don't know what to think. How about you don't think and start a whole new life, mother plugger? My roommate George and I met through work. We live 15 minutes from the office and carpool together every day. To get right into it, recently we got a new neighbor. As recent as two weeks ago, actually. Nah, uh, you got it. Nope, 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 nope. Nope. Question to y'all that's watching. Comment below. How long... If you were trying to find a roommate, right? About... And, and, and... You know... It was like somebody, it was like a stranger or something, which is, granted, you clocking up for doing that, but how long and how well would you have to know that person in order to be a roommate, like have a room, room to be roommating, uh, oh, excuse me, that was a burp and a hiccup, um, to be roommating with them, you know, because I need at least. If I'm going to be roommating with a complete stranger, I might have to get to know you, hang out with you for at least a for at least a couple months. Even after that, even 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 when we, when we move in together, I still got my eye on you, on you because you're just somebody I literally just met. You know, just because we hung out for a couple of months. Don't mean I'm gonna let my mother cluck and guard down. Just saying. You know? As far as I know, even though we hung out and did stuff together for a couple of months, you're still a a stranger to me. Or a a friendly stranger. 
which is which is which is weird. Well, I don't know why I said that, but <laughs> you didn't see him unpacking or anything. You never even saw what he looked like. See, you didn't even know if he was a man or a woman. Wow. Or how many people moved in? Wow. And I say he because obviously we found out eventually. Okay. So on the third day, George and I actually went next door to introduce ourselves, but he didn't answer the door. Okay. He was home. His car was in the driveway. We figured maybe he just couldn't answer it for whatever reason. As we were walking back down the driveway, George stopped me and told me under his breath to look at the window next to the front door. I looked and saw a kink in the blinds. A man was holding it up and staring through it like a creep. George and I looked at each other and kept walking, a dream that was both insanely awkward and creepy. Now we knew already he was not going to be the best of neighbors. That night at around one in the morning, I just started hearing noises coming from outside. It's warm where we live year round, so the windows are always open. I went to go look outside. My room is upstairs, so it kind of overlooks the neighbor's backyard, which was where the sound was coming from. I saw the neighbor. He was some big looking guy wearing a hoodie with the hood up, which was weird given that it was like 72 degrees out. And he was I just realized that his, he said it's always warm, so we always keep, or what do you say? I mean, obviously his window is open, so I, I take it like they leave their windows open all the time. Even at night, no screen protector or anything, just you, just all out in the open, huh? You know, only God knows what's going to enter your house. If y'all can't see where this is going, I'm, I don't know what else to tell you. Find a big piece of wood. It was a ridiculous scene. I went to go knock on George's door. Apparently, he was already awake from the noise, too. We had work early the next morning, and what this guy was doing at this hour was nuts. And it went on for some time. We agreed to go over and ask him politely to stop. Or close the mother clock. Since he was outside, we knocked on the gate and stood at the door. Just as we did, the song stopped. We expected the gate to open any second, but it never did. At least the song stopped, though, so we went back to sleep. How about you close your it wasn't window? Until a few nights later, that we heard noises in the middle of the night again. I woke up, but couldn't figure out what the sounds were right away. Not until I got to the window and realized the sounds were screams. The screams oh. seemed to be coming from inside the house next door, and I saw the neighbor outside in his backyard again. He was hurrying into his house, but he was dragging something. I couldn't tell what. Then he stopped and looked up at my window. I moved away from the window as soon as I realized. I ran to George's door. He was already awake from the noises too. He got on the phone with the police right away to report this. I stood right by his doorway the whole time listening. Then there was a slam from downstairs. It was our back door. We looked at each other with horrified looks on our faces. George yelled into the phone to send help because the man just entered our house. Oh shit! While he stayed on the phone with the cops, I went to the hallway and then to the stairway. I looked down the stairs and listened. There was creaking in the floorboards down there. I tiptoed back to George's room and shut the door. He told the woman on the line to have the police come in through the back door immediately and then hung up. There's no lock on his door, so we pushed up against the door in case, God forbid, the man tried to open it. I heard footsteps coming up the stairs fast, then the bathroom door opened. Footsteps then moved quickly to George's door, and we began to push as hard as we could. The man tried pushing the door open, ramming it, and then hitting it with some kind of blunt object. And that was the exact reason we didn't try to overpower him. We didn't know what kind of weapons he could have. No matter what he did, though, he couldn't push through the door. We heard him go downstairs, and all was quiet. A few minutes passed, and we finally decided to open the door and peek outside. It wasn't in the hallway. Suddenly, we heard a man show police in a deep, commanding voice. George and I ran downstairs in relief. But when we got there, we didn't see any police. I noticed right away, however, that someone was hiding behind our dining room table. I told George to run back upstairs with me, and then the man hiding behind the table got up and chased us up the stairs. 
This time we went to the bathroom where we could at least lock the door. But we weren't in there for long because once again we heard someone shout police downstairs. This time for real. The man banging on the door stops and there was silence upstairs. George and I screamed up here, up here. And the two police officers came up the stairs yelling at the man to drop his weapon. We heard the sound of a knife being dropped to the floor. And when the police told us to come out, we did. They brought him out to the police car and called. Nope. Nah. Nope. Sometimes, some, sometimes police officers make mistakes. So if they tell me to come out, I'm going to be like, you sure? You positive? Yes, come out? Question mark. You sure? All I'm saying is, all I'm saying, what if the police officers are in cahoots? So, you know, it, I mean, there's that too. You know, you can't take nothing, you can't take nothing out of the equation. You know, no matter how much I hate, I hate my, <laughs> but it's funny because I know how to, I know my money, but I hate math. So it's like, you know, but you just can't you, take, you can't take nothing out of you can't you can't glance over nothing you know you can't you can't just be assuming shit you know just because police officers say it's okay don't mean don't mean yeah you know nah for all we know he um old dude could have had some backups just don't know don't know. Put him in the back seat. We told the officers to check his house because we heard screams. They went in with guns drawn as another cop car pulled up in front of our house. And then two more cop cars pulled up two minutes later. We were shocked to see the cops come out of the house with a woman crying hysterically. She had been locked in his basement and she was pressed up against the door, screaming as loud as she could. There was also a dead body in the bag the man had been dragging in the backyard. Damn. We didn't find out the whole story behind who this woman was or who the dead body was, but we're pretty sure the man was going to jail for life. The house is now back up for rent. We're just hoping somebody normal moves in. Nah, I'm moving. Fuck out of here. I'm moving as far away from that neighborhood as possible. Cause I'm gonna have, I'm gonna end up having nightmares. Like, nah. You see, but they see in story number three, Whatever happened to minding your own business? You know? Like, and I, I don't mean to sound... Like, stereotypical. I think that's how you say it. Or cliche. Or I don't mean to sound... Like, disrespectful or anything. But, like, up... Like, if you live in the, in the USA... Right? Or, you, or if you've been here for a while... You know that up north, north, mm -hmm. um, that people don't really don't like you know they necessarily don't care about what you're doing. Like they're not all up in your business. Like they they about their business and their lives. You know, but it's like crazy because like it's like the more you go down south, the more they get into your business. The hell, like, get the hell out of my face. Like, don't worry about what I'm doing. Focus focus on you, and I'm going to focus on me, and we're going to be good, okay? We're going to be good. The clock on. And I realized that, you know, versus, like, like up north, when people talk to you, they're not, like, the majority of people. They're, when they talk to you, they're not physically like like close as hell to you. Cause I kid you not. Like I live in Georgia now. Some of y'all know. Some of y'all don't know. I live in Georgia, but I'm from Maryland, right? DMV. What's up, right? But like I live, I live in Georgia, so it's like I feel. Like, I don't know if it's all southern states, but definitely where I live, this specific area, when people, the majority of the people, when when they when they talk to me, they're. They're literally like mad close, like, 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 like with arms reach close, like I, everybody has a bubble, you know, so it's like, mm, 
Like, you just popped the hell out of my bubble. Like, that's mad disrespectful. Like, nah, you got it. But, um, yeah, story number three, I feel like that that was all on them. That was like, that, like, like, that was all on the, uh, on the boys because they, 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 they sleep with, um, their windows, like, wide the hell open. I don't care if it's, I don't care if it's like, I don't care if it's like, like, like cold as hell. I don't care if you're cold as hell or hot as hell, you know, unless you have a screen protector and a good screen protector, you shouldn't leave your, you shouldn't leave your, your, uh, your window wide the hell open like that. You got me, nah, nah, oh my, so you deserve all of that, you know, but it's like, it's crazy because, you know, the reason I, like, it, none of story number three never even would have never would have existed if if they were just minding their business and they closed their windows all the way and they locked them bitches. You know, people gotta learn to mind their business. You feel me? And even if you did hear some screams or some noises, you know, sleep with like some music or something. You know, do what I do. That's what I do. You know, not only are my windows locked at night and doors and vents, but also every night I sleep. I have a music uh, playlist, a sleep sleep playlist, I guess, that I listen to. I listen to music every night I go to sleep. Um, just helps me relax, stay, stay level and all that. But, um, yeah, that was totally on the boys' fault because should, they should have mind their business. Right, they definitely should have had their windows closed all the way and locked, and just and just like it never it never would have came to that at all. Like he could have did him, and he would have eventually got caught. You know, cause yeah, people gotta learn to mind their business. And I'm gonna tell y'all again, between the hours of two and three a.m. It's prime time for para. Nah, 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 nah. Para, I can never say certain words off bucks. Paranormal time. There we go. Um, I'm going to keep, oh my God, that scared me. <laughs> but yeah, man. The second you enter your house, please make sure all doors, windows, are, and vents are locked, double locked, triple locked, quadruple locked, and we going to be good. Keep it cool, keep it classy, and I love you. Stay happy, my family. That was, that was weird, because I was, okay, whatever.